This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Everyone's here is super smiling. This message of unconditional love. Boys in the Air Force, super smiling. Here to save the day. Kindness is the way. We begin now. Hi, everybody. I'm Megan Blake, dog trainer and the pet lifestyle coach. You are now on a super smiley adventure. Our show here is named after my dog, Super Smiley. Smiley created and inspired the world's first kindness program, teaching kids kindness through pets, the Super Smiley Project. We traveled the country speaking to thousands of kids about the lessons we can learn from pets. And to bring this to the whole world, we created the Super Smiley Flash Mob for pet adoption and kindness. We danced from Florida to California, from Washington State to New York City, sharing our message of kindness. And our bumper music at the top of the show was written and performed especially for the Super Smiley Project by our amazing Pet Life Radio producer, Mark Winter. Here to save the day, kindness is the way. (laughs) <laughs> and as the pet lifestyle coach, I work as more than just a dog trainer. I work in four basic areas, training, travel and adventure, exercise and health, and dog wisdom, what dogs can teach us. How can dogs enhance us on a deep level? Training and skills definitely lay the foundation, but the real adventure lies in much, much more. And this leads us right to our guest today, who I am beyond thrilled and honored to bring to you. To set the stage, There exists a beautiful monastery in the low slopes of the Taconic Mountains, surrounded by rural farmland near Cambridge, New York. This is where Eastern Orthodox monks live with German shepherds and other dogs, training and deepening the communication between humans and dogs. They're known as the Monks of New Skeet. And with us today is one of the Monks of New Skeet, Brother Christopher. Welcome, Brother Christopher. Thank you, Megan. I'm Brother Christopher from the Monks of New Skeet, here to risk a super smiley adventure. (laughs) That was so awesome. Thank you so much. That wasn't even cute. I appreciate that so much, Brother Christopher. And thank you for giving us your time today. And uh, as I said earlier, I know I could speak with you for hours and for days, but we have only a short time. So first, can you set the stage um, for our listeners with how the New Skeet Monastery began and how it wove into its tapestry this amazing work with dogs? Sure. I'll, it's a long story, which I'll compress, but the monastery began in 1967 with a group of about 12 monks who had formerly been in a more active monastery, but they wanted to live a more contemplative life. And so they went out on their own and basically started from scratch building a community that they named New Skeet. Okay. New Skeet harkens back to the Egyptian desert, where when the first monks began in the early centuries of this uh, millennium, it was in the deserts of Skeet that the monks first settled. And so essentially, by taking the name New Skeet, what we wanted to do was live traditional monastic values in a contemporary way. And so the other early brothers began, and basically they supported themselves doing anything that they could to make ends meet. But when they first began, they had a German shepherd mascot whose name was Kier. Kier. And Kier was a wonderful dog. Okay, he kept things very light. And uh, help the the brothers just in those difficult early years. He just sort of was a fun-loving dog, and every brother was able to go out and play with him, take you know, take him for walks, this type of thing. He was just a, an ideal dog. Well, sadly, he passed away, and when that happened, the community unanimously thought, "Oh, we just got to get another replacement." Okay, we can't live without a dog, and so. We fortunately were able to come in contact with a very good breeder in Massachusetts who sold us two German Shepherd dogs, females, that were wonderful. And since we were living hand to mouth in those days, she said, you know, these are breeding quality German Shepherds. You might want to consider supplementing your income by breeding these dogs and selling the puppies. Okay, well, we thought, okay, uh, we're willing to try that. Brother Thomas was the spearhead of sort of all things dog in those days. And so 
we bred those two dogs. They were Jesse and Becky. And lo and behold, we discovered that people were enchanted with the possibility of adopting a puppy from a monastery where they, you know, the puppy was raised. And so one thing led to another and the brothers sort of realized, wow, what would it be like if each brother took care of a dog and provided it with the companionship and care that was necessary, but at the same time, then we could breed that particular female and sell the puppies. Well, what happened is it turned into something absolutely felicitous because we found that we could help support ourselves by selling the puppies. We weren't doing anything like a puppy mill or anything like that because each brother was taking care of dog and giving it the companionship that was necessary. But also when you have 10 or 11 dogs living under one roof, well, you can imagine how important it is that they be well-behaved and be able to get along. And so Brother Thomas took the lead in teaching each brother how to care and train for their, their dog. And lo and behold, that with blending the values of our own monastic uh, environment, we were able to have literally a pack of dogs that were able to live with each other peacefully in a monastic environment. People would come and say, oh, gosh, I wish that my dog would behave like your dogs. Okay. And, <laughs> well, you know, when you're, uh, when you're hungry monk, okay, it's funny how ideas uh, germinate. Brother Thomas thought, well, you know, what would it be like if we established a three-week program, board and train program, where we took in people's dogs and trained them, which is what we started to do. So simultaneously, a breeding program and then a board and train program developed. And what it did ultimately, apart from enrich our lives, it established a very stable economy for the monastery and got us off to a very good start. Well, as years passed, I mean, Brother Thomas unfortunately died in an automobile accident oh, I'm so uh, sorry. In, the early, in the early 70s, but the brothers picked up the work that he had really initiated. And so a particular and sort of unique approach to training developed here at the monastery to the point where we had a client who brought us a dog, and he happened to be an editor from New York City. And he was so pleased with the results of the training that he said, you really ought to write a book about this. <laughs> yes. Well, that's yes. exactly what the brothers did. They laughed. They said, us, write a book? What are you talking about? We're monks, you know? What do we know about writing books? And he said, no, I'm serious. What you're doing here is unique and unusual. And I think that there's a book here and I'm willing to help you. Long story short, the brothers pooled their talents, worked with the editor and out came How to Be Your Dog's Best Friend. Now, at the time, the brothers thought that they had pulled off one of the biggest uh, cons in the universe by actually getting a book published on training dogs. But lo and behold, it wound up gradually becoming a very, very well-received book that I think people from all different spectrums found helpful, inspiring, particularly because it had a unique angle. It wasn't just nuts and bolts dog training. What it was emphasizing was the relationship that we share with our canine friends and how to maximize that and also how to appreciate the spiritual dimension that's present in that. Brother Christopher, this is amazing. I just want to put in this is exactly, exactly what we believe on a super smiley adventure, that animals can lead us on these amazing adventures. And it doesn't have to be just with dog training or traveling, you know, to um, Yosemite or something. It can be an inner journey. And one of the questions that I always ask at the end of the show, but I'm going to ask it right here because this is our focus, is many times when I'm interviewed, I, I've written that animals have a purity of spirit that teaches purely. This is what I've learned. Learn. And it seems that the dogs were actually becoming teachers for you all, bringing you on, on almost like a higher call. Can you talk about that? It seems like that's where you were headed. Can sure, you go there's there? there's no question that one of the things I think if you were to ask each of the brothers, they would say totally without artifice that our involvement with dogs and particularly the individual dogs that each brother has had, that has made us better monks. It has also made us better human beings. And what I think is stands behind that 
is that dogs are absolutely guileless. What you see is what you get. Yes. They're not phony. They're absolutely straight with you. You know, if a dog is happy and joyous, you see it just written all over their body. <laughs> if they're annoyed, you see that too. In our yes. human relationships, oftentimes, you know, we're used to sort of wondering, well, am I getting the straight story here uh, from this particular individual? Well, with a, a dog that's never really in doubt, you always know what you have. And so I think that I'll speak personally for me working with dogs has drawn out the best aspects of my own humanity. Mm, I love that. I'm grateful for the opportunity that I get here to every day work with a broad variety of dogs. I mean, we have German Shepherds here in the community, but we train dogs of all breeds. And so, you know, over the past 40 years, I've trained thousands of dogs. And so it's been an enormous privilege precisely because it has put me, I think, in closer touch with sort of the mystery that sort of grounds life. You know, oh, I that- love this. I love this. And I want to interject right here because you were just going right with my flow of what I wanted to ask you about. There's a book that you all have called The Divine Canine. That title jumped out at me. Can you talk about, I think that's right where you're going. How are dogs divine? How do they affect us in a divine way? Again, I think that dogs, because they're totally themselves, Yes. Okay. They are certainly part of the mystery of creation. But what's so distinctive about dogs is how probably more than any other species, dogs and human beings have been connected on a deep relational level. Dogs are very, very social. Okay. And they, they're pack animals. And given the fact that human beings have found for millennia how useful dogs can be to the enhancement of life. I mean, not simply economically, but from that also how they've just seen how dogs, well, I put it, draw the best out of ourselves. I think that uh, there's something that's really unique there. Now, for me, in my relationship with my dogs, okay, my dogs aren't divine in the sense that they're not God, you know, or anything like that, but they are part of the mystery of this universe. And certainly they're not just objects that are here, you know, sort of set to the side simply for our use. No, dogs have, a, I think, a more deeply mysterious role in, in humanity. I love this. I love this, Brother Christopher. And we got to take a short break. I don't want to break. Like I said, if you could stay for a couple of days on my show, we would <laughs> we would okay. love that. But we are going to get you out on time. And right now, I want to hear more about the philosophy that Brother Christopher has and actually about training dogs right after this break from our possum sponsors. And we love you guys. Smiley, can you wait? <coughs> Good boy. It's designerpetsweaters.com, hand-knitted designer sweaters for your precious pup or cool cat. Beautiful couture patterns for your pets, including custom-knitted formal wear, casual wear, yachting, and even sports-themed. Many designer pet sweaters include feathered tammy hats, top hats, and a lot of sparkle. Each sweater includes leg loops, front paw sleeves, and leash opening. Visit designerpetsweaters.com to order your four-legged fashions today. Your pets will stay warm for the winter and be runway ready. Large or small, we fit them all. Designerpetsweaters.com Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com Everyone's here in Super Smiley His message of unconditional love and we're back on a super smiley adventure with Brother Christopher from the Monks of New Skeet talking about the deep connection we have with our dogs. Welcome back, Brother Christopher. Thanks. Nice. So nice to be here. Oh, I'm so, so grateful and so honored. So this connection you were just talking about, for me, the connection between humans and dogs is always there. The trick being that we as humans have to be clear enough and willing to see it. What to you is the key for us to connect with our dogs? I think one thing, there are several I would highlight. First is respect. Respecting the dog as a unique creature rather than simply 
a cookie cutter dog, so to speak. Each dog has its own uniqueness and it's our responsibility to draw the dog as it were out of itself to help the dog become that unique dog that it is supposed to be to put it in human terms i think that flowing from that one of the things that we really try to do in our work with dogs is listen to what is really needed in the particular situation with the dog as opposed to viewing training, for example, as simply imposing my will on the dog in a somewhat arbitrary way. I think that the best way that I can show respect for my dog is to listen to what it really needs. Okay, now naturally that's going to take in appropriate exercise, food, social connection with me, my own time, training, play with the dog. You know, right. enjoy, I love that. you know, enjoy the life that we're sharing. Okay. All of those things honor the nature of the dog. And to the extent that we pay attention to them, we become better. We become more who we're supposed to be. And I think that that's one of the things that I've noticed in working with people. Part of the reason why dogs touch human beings so much is that they provide access to us to our best selves. Again, I you know brought that up as it related to me it's personally. True. It's I so see true. It. Yeah, I see it with with so many of our clients. And it's a, a wonderful and humbling thing to experience that from your dog. Okay. It's so perfect, Brother Christopher. I love the way you all are so expansive in your thinking and look, listening to the dogs and seeing what they need. And I just have to say this. I mentioned Mark Winters. Ours, actually, I co-wrote it with him, one of the verses. And the first verse is, listen to your pets. They'll tell you what you need. Animals will teach us if you only stop to see. Isn't that amazing? Yes, you almost said amazing. those exact words words and that's why i had to repeat that is that and one thing that i want to say here is that this kind of shows what the song what i just said what you just said is that all of this is already there it's just we as humans need to be open to see it it's like a like god's gift has given us this would you agree with that yes i certainly would <laughs> no absolutely and Brother Christopher, we have such little, little time, but I, so I want to ask for our listeners here, um, let's get to a little more practical right for this next question. Are there specific basic commands that you feel are fundamental to the training that dogs need to integrate with their families? Because the goal actually is to have these dogs integrate and then stay in their homes forever and everyone's happy, right? So what, what do you start with in training? Well, generally speaking, the most fundamental thing that we begin with is walking on leash, okay? Ah, uh, mm -hmm. You know... Uh, and the reason is because wherever you are, okay, whether you live in an urban or suburban setting or even in a, a rural setting, right from the time that you get your dog, you have the responsibility of at least taking the dog out, walking the dog. And we all know the consequences of walking a dog that has no idea about what it means to, to, for example, walk politely on leash. Yes, and if they don't know, they don't know, right? They just don't know. So it's our responsibility as humans to show them in a playful, loving, positive way, right? Absolutely. I mean, I think that one of the things that we certainly teach from early on with our puppies is a gentle way to learn what walking with the individual politely on leash is all about. So that's you know, certainly one thing that is key and that perdures throughout the life of the dog. Obviously, another thing that is key for most people is coming when called. You know, how fun is it to be chasing your dog for a couple of hours when the dog realizes, oh, this is a great game. It's a game. It's, that's what I always say. I always tell my clients, it's fine for your dog to chase you, but never train them to run while you chase them because they will think that is so fun. And you literally will have trained your dog to run from you, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so what we, you know, what we encourage owners with a variety of tools, like, you know, using something as simple as a long line, you know, early on. Okay, yeah. and, and make it fun. And, uh, you know, naturally, we use a certain amount of food as a motivator, but then we gradually wean the dogs off of that. We don't want the dogs getting to a point where 
their recall is conditioned upon seeing the owner uh, bag of treats you know, in your purse. Yeah, you here's the, the, the <laughs> come, that, you know, come Fido, you know. Yes. And Brother Christopher, you mentioned that you have the training program, which is so, so important, such is such an integrated part of what you all do. And we talked about the German shepherds, because I think from the what we see as the monks of New Skeet, we always see the German shepherds. And, and I always say that my favorite dog breed, you see Smiley here, my favorite dog breed, I say in quotes, is the shelter mutt, because that's our advocacy. But my as far as a real breed, German shepherds, hands down from me, they're so sensitive and intelligent. And I just, I am in love, literally with German shepherds. But Again, you work with all dogs. Can you um, talk just a little bit about your training program again and give your website where people can go and find you? Sure. Well, we have here at the monastery, we've been training dogs for well over 50 years. And so now we have a two and a half week board and train mm. that brings dogs in and teaches not simply the, the basic exercises, but we also try and move towards off-leash reliability, certainly with the commands of come and let's go. And we've essentially have a description of the program that your listeners can go to at www.newskete.org. And there's uh, a link to, to our training program and basic information about it. But we've been very, very fortunate to have sort of a steady stream of clients all these years. And we're blessed by the fact that so many of them come from word of mouth, or at least they become aware of our work through our books. Yes. And you all are putting out so much positive, positive, just love filled information for these dogs. And we're going to take another break here. And when I come back, I want to give uh, you, Brother Christopher, some quick fire questions about dogs and us. And that'll happen right after this break. Smiley, can you wait? Good boy. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There's no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Radio.com, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Pet Everyone's here is super smiley. He's messy dog. Unconditional love. And we're back on a super smiley adventure with Brother Christopher from the Monks of New Skeet. Welcome back, Brother Christopher. Thanks. Okay, some quick fire questions because I promised Brother Christopher we would compact this all into 30 minutes. And But your answers don't have to be short. But the shorter they are, the more questions I can ask. So question number one, why are dogs miraculous? Why are dogs miraculous? Boy, that's a great question. <laughs> Smiley told me to ask you that. <laughs> okay, here's what I would say. What a miracle does is it astonishes us. It can be just something so small. We usually think of miracles as, you know, fireworks type of events, but actually so much in life is miraculous that happens on a just a very subtle and a very gentle way. And I think that when we look at dogs, when we look at their behavior, when we look at their own uniqueness, we see that each dog is its own miracle. And, you know, the joy and pleasure that they give us each day should make us enormously grateful. And so for me, in this world that is so stressful and filled with challenges, to be able to go to that reservoir of joy every day is itself miraculous. I love that. And I love the way you distilled the word miraculous down to the word miracle, because dogs do give us little, little healings all the time. Little, yeah, they do. Yeah. 
absolutely. Okay, next question. So philosophically, why do you think dogs are here with us? Why did we even have this happen for us? I think that, you know, it's interesting. We often view the role of the dog in our life as dependent on a decision that human beings made. But I also think that there is very good evidence, even on a scientific level, that it was as much a choice of the dog, of the canines, as it was human being. And that's where this yes. connection happened. I mean, dogs found that being in relationship to human beings meant that food was more accessible. Human beings discovered that having the presence of the dogs was something that helped keep them safe, alerted them to, for example, dangerous animals, the dogs were. And so with this give and take, okay, I think that the relationship between the two has been forged. I think that, you know, that's on a practical level and on a scientific level, that's the case. But I think, you know, on a more poetic level, God knew we needed dogs. It's just as simple as that. I agree with you on all those levels. No doubt. I love that answer. And one more question, because we're running out of time. How can dogs be a mirror for us? How can they mirror to us back what we need to see? What I had said before earlier, that dogs are absolutely guileless, means that they're an important source of information to us, how we're coming across. And by learning to read their body language, okay, because dogs communicate so much by their mannerisms, by their, uh, by their bodies, through their bodies, okay, we can come to a deeper understanding of ourselves, how I'm coming across, whether I'm coming across in, for example, a insensitive way, whether I'm coming across in, for example, a flippant way, whether I'm disengaged, you know, whether the dog is, for example, basically soliciting more attention from me because it's lacking that connection that it so desires. If I'm paying attention to my dog, it becomes a vast resource of information that helps us in the very important role of self-knowledge. Of coming mm, to really I love that. understand ourselves. And that's, like I said, one of the things that I have found living here in a contemplative monastic environment is that in addition to meditation and prayer and you know all of the traditional aspects of monastic life, reading the dog is equally an important and valuable source of self-knowledge, of growth, of learning. How am I? as a human being. I love that. I, and I just want to say that one of the very first sentences I say to my dog clients is, remember this, dogs communicate with energy and body language. And you just hit on both of those things. And we need to learn that, take it in with empathy, and then it was re reflected back. It's just a, a circle. And I loved also, Brother Christopher, the way you talked about dogs and humans combining. And when you were saying that, I got an image of literally combining the two packs, the tribe of the ancient people and the pack of the dogs. And we became one community. Isn't that amazing? No, it's I love absolutely that. the case. I mean, dogs are pack animals but also human beings are pack animals. Yes, yes. I never thought of it that way until you phrased it with that imagery. And dear, dear brother Christopher, we are so grateful for the work you do with these beautiful creatures, God's gift to us. Thank you so much for your work and for joining us on a super smiley adventure. Can you give your website one more time so people can learn more? Make sure everybody got that. Sure. It is new skeet. N-E-W-S-K-E-T-E dot -E org. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Brother Chris. Thank you so much, Brother Christopher. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. And give your puppies up there a big squish from Smiley and me, okay? Thank I you sure so much. I will. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Megan. It's been so nice being with you. And oh, I hope to come up and meet you one day. I would love that. Thank you so, so much. And Brother Christopher, and thank you everyone out there who joined a super smiley adventure today. I'm Megan Blake, dog trainer and the pet lifestyle coach. Reach out to me here at Pet Life Radio and come join me for my free group dog classes every Sunday on Zoom. I started this project as a public service during the pandemic. 
You can find everything I'm doing, all my dog training videos, social media. It's all on my website at meganblakeofficial.com or at webeginnow.com. Have a beautiful day. Thank you to the monks of New Skeet, to Brother Christopher. Thank you to our awesome producer, Mark Winter, and to everybody who loves their pets. Thank you all for joining us on a super smiley adventure. And remember, wherever you are with your pets, we begin now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.